namaste uh, myself priya so i welcome uh, each co explorers for the 30th uh, combined monthly meeting uh, in english on uh, universal human values uh, uh, the uh, the co explorers who had attended the uhv workshop attend uh, these meetings uh, usually these meetings are conducted as we know the workshop consists of five days so in the workshop we come to know many of the proposals but these proposals uh, can be uh, exploration the further exploration starts when we attend these uh, meetings so that is why we have been conducting these meetings regularly uh, every week and monthly meetings every uh, first sunday uh, so this is a 30th uh, monthly meeting so today's uh, agenda we have uh, we have the nationwide activities and the uh, purpose of this meeting it will be shared by uh, sri rajul astana ji member ncip act and uh, we have the participants sharing uh, of their uhv journey so we will be having today uh, two sharing by uh, dr tara prasanna ji and Uh, Dr. Sunil Kumar ji. So we'll be having two sharings, and the keynote session will be taken by the resource person, uh, Kumar Bhaiya. So today's uh, uh, that is the keynote session is personal development and uh, societal development. And finally, we have the future plan and the closing remarks by Avasal Bhi uh, Didi. And. so that is the uh, uh, today agenda for today's uh, monthly meeting so i welcome um, all the co explorers so now i welcome raju ji to give the purpose of the meeting and nationwide update thank you yeah namaste to all uh, priya ji this uh, agenda it's uh, i think an old agenda that uh, we we have uh basically three presentations here three discussions and uh, some sharing can take place also uh after the update from my side then we'll have kumar's i mean after, we'll have uh, this uh, sharing and then the keynote address and then sharing by umesh ji that is a very important part he is going to talk about team development Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So I think the um, uh, somehow that got. Uh, uh, yeah. Today we'll be out. having two sharing by uh, sharing of the participants uh, Sunil Bhaiya and uh, Tara Prasanna Bhaiya. Yeah, we'll have to keep that quite brief because mm. uh, uh, there would be the, we want to keep sufficient time for these three pieces. i'll try to keep uh, the uh, uh, first part very brief but uh, we certainly do want the keynote and the sharing uh, umesh ji is sharing uh, prominently in the meeting okay 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 bye yeah. certainly the sharing is important and we can try to keep that also brief umesh ji any thoughts on that are you there Yes, but yeah, we can go with the agenda. What you have said. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, very nice. So uh, I'm going to cover uh, what is our target, where we are, and a little bit about uh, potential next step. Uh, if you look at this last month, we've had a large number of face-to-face -face FTPs, fifteen FTPs. That means every two days there is one FTP that is started. and as you can see most of these ftps are eight day ftps so there is a massive amount of effort that the everybody has put in in this nine introductory uhv ftps three day ftps five uhv two ftps which are aict funded and one uhv three ftp also eight days aict funded so it's a massive amount of effort that has been put in by everybody and for that reason uh, we did not do any uh, of those uh, online sessions 
this month, other than the regular meetings and all the other sessions that are taking place. Now, this is really heartening because this moves us to our target. Uh, very, I think this is a sort of a, a landmark that we are uh, able to make this much of effort. It will certainly move us closer to our target of uh, universal human values in mainstream education, ultimately, of course, leading to a humane society. And those of you who are, whose colleges and institutions are making that effort, you will be able to certainly see some changes in your institution. At least in your department, you'll be able to see that. And that is what we would like to share, uh, that we are able to see that the effort is in line with our target and we are making progress towards it and that we are able to make this happen we as volunteers as a team of large number of volunteers who are doing this because we feel that it is something which we want to see happen we are not doing it because somebody is telling us to do it but we are doing it because we feel that it is something which is making a difference in my life and i want to contribute to the life of other people so we are doing it for that basic reason, isn't it? And we have been steadily working on these things, our self-development, and in parallel with that, the team development and the participation in societal development through various programs, as we just mentioned, as well as various other projects and other activities. So now where we are right now, and where we have been moving, you know, the direction that we have been moving. We have been conducting an online international conference called International Conference on Human Values uh, in Higher Education. We have been making this effort for uh, since 2012, uh, early on, and there were very few colleges and few institutions that had started working on this. But now that we have many uh, we will have this conference online uh, in uh, next month. I mean, sorry, not next month, in November. And uh, I'll give you some details about it. The idea of the conference is very important, actually. The idea of the conference is to inform what we are doing, inspire and motivate educators from all across the world on our work on human values and if they can start if they're not already doing that in their institutions or in whatever their circle of influences it would be a major step so our work has reached to a stage where this is not only possible we have the confidence we have the wherewithal we have the experience we have the content we have the process and of course, we are improving all of these things also, but we have the basic things that can make a difference. So November 22 to 24, we will have uh, this conference. We will do it online and we'll probably be able to use Zoom events, which is a little bit uh, advanced version of uh, these webinars. Uh, invitations are being sent to more than 475 uh, universities from all across the world, from all seven continents. Uh, the format of this uh, conference, we will have keynotes sharing by institutions, and that is where all of us come in. That we'll be sharing our journey, our individual journey, as, a, as well as our institutional journey in this uh, conference and then we will also have panel discussions involving the delegates so that they can deliberate on uh, what they have heard what they have uh, seen this will be seen also because we'll do uh, we'll have the video on uh, in this uh, in the conference so these panel discussions will be on three basic uh, things sub themes if you would or three groups of people who are interested in number one, holistic value-based education, and almost all institutions uh, would fall in that category. 
then those institutions that are working on health, particularly they can discuss about more about holistic human health. And those institutions that are working on addressing the SDGs, uh, they can uh, be in the panel on addressing SDGs at the root. So we will be talking about what is the root cause and then what can be done about the root cause in addition to the symptomatic relief that uh, we have to work on anyway. So that is the conference uh, that is going to happen and I would encourage your participation in that. This conference is being organized by us, that is the UHB team, the UHB Foundation. So we are organizing this conference together and I'm very happy to share that the host for this conference is SRM and we have so far six, uh, now seven uh, actually organizing partners who have agreed to partner with us. Triple IT Monday is the seventh one that uh, came in today. So we will have a fair number of organizing partners and together we will do this conference and share it as a gift with the rest of the world. I would certainly encourage your participation in that. We have been uh, getting uh, a good uh, response from within India, but uh, when we go out, we will see how we can uh, make it international. This conference has been run since 2012, as I mentioned. Uh, during the COVID period, we had to stop it because of the, uh, the pandemic. And we didn't restart it after the pandemic stopped because we were so busy with all the things that were happening at AICT. So now each of our institutions, they can start preparing what they are going to share during the conference. See, these keynotes, we will prepare these keynotes uh, at the you know central level, if you would. The sharing, all of us have to be part of this. This is very important because it shows that this is not something theoretical. It is something that is related to our living and we are able to understand things and we are able to live uh, to the extent that we understand and it is making a difference in our life. So this is a very important part of it to reinforce uh, what has been said in the keynotes. And then the panel discussions can be about the focus of their institutions, how we can, what we can draw from these sharings and these keynotes and how we can apply it in our own institutions. So that is the conference. And uh, as I was saying, each of our institutions, we can start preparing for it. So some things are written over here about the preparation. So one preparation is that we prepare a brief note about what we are doing and what we are thinking of, particularly our efforts, what is the impact of our efforts, and what do we see as the full potential of these efforts if we continue with these efforts consistently, and what are our plans to reach this full, full potential. So if we are able to uh, write a small note, one or two pages to start with, and prepare a presentation for the conference. We will uh, be able to share, uh, some of us will be able to, some of the institutions will be able to share where there is substantial work going on. They will be able to share in the conference. Along with that, uh, <clears throat> if we can prepare a detailed report, like some institutions are preparing an annual report or a biannual report or a newsletter. So they are writing down what uh, they have been doing and all these four points are elaborated in the detail. One of the important things that can be included in the detailed report is the impact study. So they can uh, document the real life changes that are happening in the students, in the faculty and uh, document that even if it is simply uh, <clears throat> what somebody is saying, the self-evaluation part. If we are able to simply document that, that is also a good starting point. But if we can do uh, uh, impact study, it would be very useful. 
in our institutions or in our region or in our state, we can start doing those things and include it in our detailed report. And the fourth one is uh, nice to have, if you can make a nice video uh, and you can certainly put it on the uh, conference uh, media so that they can say that you can, they can see what is happening in, in the institution in addition to what they hear during the conference. That if that happens beforehand, that would be very attractive for the people to be able to decide that or oh, some nice thing is happening in such and such an institution. So many institutions are so enthusiastic about it. So they'll be motivated to attend the conference also. So these are the four things that uh, uh, we can do, particularly the, I, uh, the uh, institutions that are uh, promising institutions or the institutions that we are trying to identify as uh, potential nodal centers. So those institutions must start doing these things. Certainly an in impact study has been conducted by IRMA. In fact, two studies have been conducted, a quantitative study and a longitudinal study. Longitudinal study is essentially uh, interviews, group discussions <clears throat> and the like <clears throat> to document uh, what is the longer term change in individuals. These studies have covered a large number of faculty members, students, institutions, and it's uh, pan-India. So it's a very important study. And the crux of that study is at the top. UHV helps in development of a holistic, humane vision of life, understanding the purpose of life, and a shift from materialistic to meaningful goals. So this is what they have written in their study. And when we analyzed the study, we found that there are the, these five key findings in that study. That uh, going through the UHV content along with the technical skills, there is enhanced academic performance in all areas, not just in UHV, but overall there is an improved academic sincerity, commitment to learning, more self-discipline and better uh, time management, all those kind of things. Uh, are noticed in those students and faculty who are uh, going through UHV. They're able to manage, I mean, you can see for yourself, for example, that uh, how you are as a volunteer able to spend you know, two, three hours every day on this. I keep asking myself, what was I doing before this? How was I spending my time? Because I am able to spend some time, like, you know, more time uh, on all of these things. So each of you has a very, a lot of responsibility in your college and still you are able to spend time on uh, make, offering your help in uh, volunteering. So it is something to celebrate. So our performance is enhanced as a whole, but I've written over here, academic performance is enhanced. Similarly, improved mental health and well-being. Reduction in stress, tension, anger, destructive tendencies, suicidal thoughts, reduction in bad habits and things like that. So improved mental health and well-being. Also improved physical health, which is very interesting. And there are quite a lot of uh, um, feedback about this also, improved physical health. Awareness of physical needs and well-being, adoption of healthier habits. All that is another interesting outcome of this study. This is what is happening. Very importantly, better collaboration and teamwork. This has been reported not only by the faculty, but also by the alumni of various institutions that at work it is helping me because my empathy, my relationship with my colleagues is better. So this is another important uh, observation, relationship with peers, faculty, family, all that has uh, improved. And there is a reduction in the conflict that was happening earlier. 
and the fifth point is heightened awareness uh, about the environment hi and heightened environmental awareness. Okay. So these, uh, I mean, people are buying things only what they need. Uh, there's a greater sense of responsibility towards resource conser conservation and ethical conduct. All these observations are there in the report. So I'd encourage you to go through the whole report and do some analysis uh, of that. There are three reports essentially in this, task A, task B, and the addendum to task B. And all of those can be shared now, I think. They have been, once they are officially uh, approved by AICT, it is, uh, uh, they have been accepted, but I think uh, we'll be able to share those reports very soon. And then um, other institutions, individuals are also making this kind of effort. Uh, this is a chapter that was written in a book by uh, Dinesh, I mean, uh, Dhirat Singh and Kuman, N. Kuman. And it has been published in this book called Foundations of Change. And what they found in their study is that education on science, technology, engineering, and maths, if it is augmented by universal human values, it is more effective. And their conclusion from that is that it will benefit. It means UHV and STEM will be beneficial to implement UHV with STEM for better development of harmony amongst human beings. So it is, it is a nice uh, conclusion. So with all this background, we are working on uh, in our regions, in our uh, states in our uh, whole nation together as uh, complementary teams. So if you look at uh, some of these points, I'm sure that all of you already know, but if we try to put some targets for ourselves, we can see these uh, six, seven points. One is volunteers. We identify those people who uh, are able to see that this is something important for them and they are uh, willing to participate in uh, their own development and the development of the, the people around them. So identify volunteers. Second one is to develop the teams, the team of the state or team of the region and nurture it through regular meetings, mentoring, and like that. So we have, uh, we can place some targets like at least five volunteers who are really proactive volunteers per state and then keep going from that. If we take uh, a target we have put long time back that we want, uh, Dasho Pema Thinle had put this target for Bhutan actually and we can also use it. He was saying that we want to develop 108 uh, good teachers who uh, are resource persons who can uh, communicate this well. If we have those 108 people, and we are moving steadily towards that, our uh, own uh, over here also, we are moving towards that. So develop the state team with you know that kind of target and rigor. Then with these two, we can take the uh, value education, UHV1, UHV2, etc., to every college in the state, state or region. And that is what the regional teams are doing. But we need to identify at least two committed faculty per institution. And slowly we'll be able to also identify the students and involve them in uh, this uh, development. Then the fourth thing is development, develop resource centers or nodal centers in the state. And then the, these targets are little uh, heavy targets, one per district. Like Madhya Pradesh has 53 districts. So they'll have to develop 53 resource centers or nodal centers. So slowly that will happen. But if we are able to do one per university, we will have a about 1,000 resource centers. 
But if we are starting, we can start with one center per region and then one center per state. And slowly this uh, target or this dream will slowly uh, get fulfilled. Uh, another important point here is translate the UHV materials and offer it in the local or regional language. This is slowly happening. And it is very important that we um, reach out to all the stakeholders in the institution. So, uh, and if we can do it for the families and for the staff and for others in the local language, it would be much more effective. So, uh, I know that uh, uh, it has been done in Punjab, in uh, Bengal, in uh, uh, Kerala, in Tamil Nadu. So it is good to see that, and uh, other states will also be doing. I don't know, but they will be. Uh, it would be very nice to see that. And take UHV to the state. This is a. I mean, I would say, uh, very. Uh, it might be a little far away right now. That every uh, family we are able to reach. We try to do some statistics. You know how many families are there. Uh, in a particular state and how many family members we have reached. So if we have reached 100 students, we would have reached 100 families. We are assuming that. So if we can reach our students, I mean, if we can reach the families, it would be very in nice to uh, take it to the whole, uh, whole state. So those are some targets, I think, uh, um, which we wanted to share. These are some things that we can, we are already already working on that. Uh, so I'll stop over here. There are any, if there is time left, I will take a couple of questions. Otherwise we'll go to the next part. Uh, thank you, uh, Rajivji, for the uh, updates. Actually, when you were uh, sharing at SH, uh, we are all in here because we are all entering like you shared, because we feel that it is contributing to our life and we would like to contribute to other person's life also. That's really true. And many things you have uh, shared, the uh, international conference, uh, it was very useful sharing for UHV volunteers and other team members. If anybody has any doubts, we can uh, ask Rajulji. Otherwise, we can go to the next uh, part of the agenda. So we have the uh, two. So uh, first, I request Arab Prasanna Bhaiya. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share um, before all of uh, family members. Uh, and in this combined monthly meeting. So uh, the details about me is in the display itself, so I don't want to just mention that. The only thing I want to share that uh, three years ago, I was introduced to UHP under some compulsion on the university. And uh, today when I see these last three years, I can see like, uh, the carbon now how in the nature carbon can convert it to diamond in the way i was uh, transforming within from animal consciousness to a step towards human consciousness uh, rajul sir talked about like full human potential like team development like such and such activities so uh they were there like many years ago i was thinking like you know why can't we change the society? Why can't we change you know, these things happening in the society that is not desirable? He is doing like that. They are doing like that. So no, it is it is not livable. And it is so difficult to live life. It's so difficult, so struggle. But over the time for uh, this last three years, getting the proposal and the first proposal was like, do I know myself? Who am I and what is my role? What is my purpose? So means uh, I will not go into the details of the proposal, but when I try to learn myself, I can see the change what I am looking outside. That is the first step to start with. It is to within, from inside. 
so the work started uh, i must uh, express my gratitude the existence to every individual every little thing existing in this, in this existence that i got an opportunity to listen to the content of the morning session uh, with the mentorship of all mentors that i got uh, an opportunity to do exercise 1 and 2 of the morning session where we try to explore within what is going on what is our feelings who is the decision maker within ourselves so these things are really rectify within ourselves which guides our imagination and gives us a platform yes we are able to guide our imagination we can have the feeling of natural acceptable feelings like feeling of love so with this feeling of relationship towards every little thing or every thing that exists in this existence we can work outside so when uh, i saw that i am a bit resolved within now uh, i got free time i got some time so what i need to do so i can start work working uh, in my recent family then my college then the entire possible possible place where i can do so I started working within the family within the college uh, and wherever like uh, we are seeing some of the activities in this phd family so that's why i am continuing and uh, this is something i found that is uh, doable enjoyable and uh, the particular word we are saying volunteering that volunteering what is really i am volunteering myself for my self development which ultimately results to this team development so thank you so much my sincere gratitude to everyone so so i started the journey of uh, you know with, with the universal human values in june 2020 that time i was heading my institution that is i was the principal of the institution and diba diba didi dr diba ji nayar who was the university coordinator of kochi university of science and technology she shared the uh, shared an email in which uh, the faculty members can join this program of universal human values at that time it was covid time lockdown time so the uh, administrative jobs are much less so i i thought i can also join this program so it was lockdown time uh, 2020 um, so then i requested my faculty members to join the program and along with that i also joined because it was i had less uh, academic as well as administrative work at that time so i joined without any compulsion that's what i wanted to point out here but then i thought it was ah, something good the usp is something good for me something which is close to what i have also been thinking um but the influence was there for a couple of weeks then i forgot about this i went back to my previous sanskar scolding uh, anger all these things came out then it came the uh, the sip online sip november 2020 there i attended with my daughter who was uh, in her first year engineering so that when i attended to the content once again uh then that made little bit of influence in me i thought something more is there i could see that i can share this with my students also something important is there for me as well as i can share with my uh, colleagues and students thereafter with the help of deepa didi and others in the university we could implement we could introduce this uh, usp2 course in the curriculum 2019 scheme in 2020 Uh, 2021 onwards we started conducting the uh, course for the students so i was also a faculty member in that um then when i started sharing the content i saw that it is not that you see to share the content unless i understand things properly and i also live by the proposals so this is something which i realized when i started uh, sharing the content to my students and then i started attending the uh, the higher workshops the refresher one part one refresher one part two i attended in due course of time when i attended refresher one part two i had given this commitment of uh, uh, volunteering um in the uh, towards the end of that in the participant sharing part i committed that i will be volunteering 
So from next week onwards, after the refreshment part two, that is in 2022 January, I started volunteering. So volunteering included at that time the only online activities because the program has been uh, conducted in the online at that time. Offline did not start, but rather did not resume by that time. So when I started volunteering uh, for this um, PPI, the potential people identification part, the FAQ, the uh, marking of these FAQs uh, and other online volunteering activities, I got connected to the content again and again. I had to listen to the content very keenly, very carefully. Listen to the participants as well as listen to the resource persons very carefully. That improved the content clarity. So this is uh, something which is very important for me to have this content clarity, which I uh, could not have at the time of attending the initial workshops, which I did not have at the time of sharing the content with my students, where I realized that I need this uh, content clarity as well as living by the proposal. These two things are important. And now when I started volunteering, then I could see the importance of having this content clarity and how to share values. How to share values in the form of proposals, not in the form of uh, prescriptions. This is something which I understood. Then immediately after that, immediately along with this uh, volunteering, I started giving this demo presentations. So then I, when I did this demo presentation to the uh, in front of the senior resource persons, I could see where I am lacking in sharing the content, where I am lacking in uh, putting the proposals as such to the stakeholders, to the students, the faculty members. I could see that I have been sharing this like prescription. Uh, so I have to have a change from this prescribing mode of presentation to the um, to the uh, uh, proposal mode of uh, presentation. So that's what I learned there. And this is in fact helping me to self-develop. So in each of these steps, what I could see is that the change within me that is happening, the not only just understanding these proposals, just like information, I started uh, living by the proposals. Now, when I started living by the proposals, I also got more interest in attending uh, more and more sessions of UHV as well as the morning sessions. So then came the morning session. I started attending the morning session from the end of the fourth batch onwards. So there I got an opportunity to practice some of the proposals through the steps of this exercise one and two. And uh, that had a great influence upon my uh, way of looking at things. So observation power has increased. I could uh, spend more time uh, for myself as well as for the others for this volunteering activities. As Rajiv Bhaiya pointed out, what was I doing before this? This is what I was thinking when uh, I started volunteering and I started sp spending time for this activities of volunteering, including online and later offline. So in 2023, uh, January, um, uh, 2023, March, by that time, Umesh Pia called me and uh, asked me to share the content in SRM IST as a resource person. So I was wondering what I could do as in the face to face workshop. Umesh Pia said, You are the resource person, you have to go there and share the content. Now, this was in fact a challenge in front of me to share the content in a uh, face to face workshop for the first time. So Umesh Pia has given me the uh, the uh, opportunity to select my team also. So I selected my team. And then we went to with Dibesh Chi and Sumati Didi. I went to this SRM IST for sharing the content. And when I shared the content in front of uh, uh, more than 100 participants at that time, the faculty members at that time, that had given me a lot of uh, openings, how to, how, how to share the content in front of uh, a set of participants, how to address their questions, particularly when I have been conducting the classes for technical subjects like uh, mathematically oriented kind of subjects, uh, sharing content like this and answering to the questions of the participants was very, very challenging for me. So this was another uh, step which I had for my own personal development. And then the, and in turn, this was helping me to uh, have a team development also. So in my institution, in my university, we have a team 
so we are now sitting together every week uh, to share the content and to uh, to uh, answer the questions and, and to have clarifications regarding the content of UHV as well as to have uh, um, clarity regarding how to share the content with the participants. So this is what we are doing. The team is getting developed. So I could see that then um, many face-to-face -face workshops, many online workshops, I could share the content and uh, translate the content to the uh, regional language, Malayalam, as well as uh, doing other uh, volunteering activities. So this volunteering activities, they're helping me to develop myself. I ask this question many times when I do this uh, activities of volunteering, why do I volunteer? What is the purpose of volunteering? I can see that the purpose of volunteering is initially it was to show others that I'm doing something. Now it has been changing over the past two, two and a half years. I can see that it is changing to uh, the purpose of doing all these things is for me to understand much better the content uh, and to help others also to understand the content and not only to understand the content, but to live by the content. That's very important for me. So I can see that I'm very slowly developing myself through this volunteering activities of universal human values. And uh, uh, I can share the content. I am able to share the content to uh, the faculty members in and around my institution and many uh, states of this south southern part of India. And I share the content with uh, many students also in the nearby institutions or otherwise online offline. So this is helping me to develop myself. When there are questions by the participants, I uh, try to find out responses. I try to explore within and find responses. And uh, sharing this response also invokes many other added questions. So this is further helping me to improve myself, to refine myself, uh, to develop myself as well as help my team to develop. And in turn, I also uh, help the society around. I do some community activities also, uh, community projects also in the environment. Uh, sustainability as the main motto of many of my projects. So I can have this um, influence or implementation of the proposals of uh, human values in doing my projects with my students or otherwise. So what I'm trying to uh, conclude, how I'm trying to conclude this is the Opening up of the proposals of universal community values is helping me to self develop, to develop the team of my institution and also to help the society also to develop. So whenever I see that the urgency is there for me to develop myself through the proposals, through self expression proposals of UHV, I can see that I have this urgency also to uh, share the content with others, uh, with my family members, with my colleagues, uh, with my students, and the society around. That is helping everyone else. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Priya Didi, over to you. Uh, thank you, Sunil Bhaiya, for your nice sharing. It is really inspiration for all of us. Really, it is inspiring. You are an inspiration to all team members uh, in our region. So thank you so much. Next, uh, we will be going for the keynote session to uh, the resource person, Kumar Bhaiya. Over to you, Namaste. Namaste, everyone. First of all, let me congratulate the team for the good number of participants that we have in the monthly meeting today. <laughs> it is more than 140, so that is very good to see. That shows our enthusiasm and our commitment for societal transformation as well as personal transformation. So I'm not going to share any new content today. This has already been shared by Ganesh Ji. So, Didi, how much time do I have? Uh, 60 minutes, 60, one hour. One hour, okay, Didi. Okay. Nice. So, we can have a lot of interaction today then. So, whatever questions we have regarding the content that has been shared by Ganesh Ji earlier, we can take all those questions and have some sharing as well as discussion over the points covered. Primarily, what Ganesh Ji had been sharing was personal transformation for societal transformation. And we can all see the relevance of it. 
we have been talking about personal development, team development, societal development, isn't it? So at the level of myself, what transformation is required and why it is important? This is something to be explored. We all get bothered about the problems in the society. Every day we are getting news about so many catastrophes, either uh, in the society or in the nature. You know? And we get perturbed also. And sometimes our thoughts become problem centric. We start thinking in terms of solving those problems by some means or the other. And we may also lose our vision. So we need to be really clear what kind of societal transformation we are aspiring for and how is it going to happen? Can the societal transformation take place without personal transformation? Can I have some opinion on this? Can the societal transformation take place without personal transformation? No. Nice. So we can all see that personal transformation is at the core. Unless I evolve myself as a human being, I am not going to be a pillar for societal transformation or a human society. So we can see that our goal is basically to live with continuous fulfillment. If our aspiration is only to live, it can be fulfilled by physical facility. If we want to live with fulfillment, we also require relationship. But if we want to live with continuous fulfillment, that is continuous happiness and prosperity, then we have to ensure right understanding followed by relationship and then physical facility. So we have to prioritize things in life and this would be the correct priority. As a human being, my first priority is right understanding. With right understanding only, I'm able to understand my relationship, ensure the naturally acceptable feelings in relationship and fulfill it so that I feel happy in my mutual relations, in family, outside family, in my organization, wherever. Similarly, with right understanding only, I'm able to make out the need for physical facility rightly so that I feel that, yes, I have enough now through production. And I'm also able to enrich the nature around. We are all acquainted with this. And I think we all are into this kind of transformation where we are able to assign the right priority to right understanding. So the way we have assembled together in this session shows that we could even be taking rest on the weekend or going out for uh, shopping or something if we were not acquainted with this kind of exploration. But now we are into this exploration. We are able to spare time for this, isn't it? So that shows the priority that we have set in our life now. And basically, right understanding is the core content of education. And when we talk about skills, basically the skills are meant to fulfill the relationship with human being and to fulfill the need for physical facility for the body rightly and that becomes our sanskar and we are all into this transformation this process of transformation so maybe that when we were not acquainted with this proposal or we are not into self-exploration our focus of living was only physical facilities we were bothered about physical facilities whatever we had appeared to be less and all the time we were planning we were designing things so that we could have more and more physical facility to have more and more happiness from them. And we might be suffering in relationship. We might be completely confused within ourselves. So this could be our early state. But now that we are exposed to this process of exploration, we have now uh, entered into this process. We are all work in progress, isn't it? So the progress has got initiated. And there was some state from where we started, there's some state where we want to be finally, and we are uh, on the way to ensure this kind of transformation. And we have to rightly evaluate where I am today. We will talk about it. We have to rightly evaluate where I am today and whether I have been able to assign this kind of priority for me or not. So let me ask another question. What do you feel about yourself? Have you been able to assign this kind of priority in your life? What do you feel about yourself? You can respond in the chat box. Are you able to see that right understanding now comes at the first priority for you? 
and physical facilities are uh, important, but more important is relationship. Nice. All the responses in affirmation. Very nice. So we are all in this process of transformation. Now, if you look at the whole existence, uh, in one look, we can see it like this. So the whole existence is coexistence, that is units are submerged in space. The units collectively make the nature and the nature is submerged in space, which is all pervading. When we look at any unit in the nature, it is limited in size. It is an activity in itself and active with other units, while space is unlimited and it is no activity. When we look at the units, the way they are submerged in space, we can see that being submerged in space, every unit is self-organized, self-energized, and recognizing the relationship and fulfilling it. The units are of two kinds, material and consciousness. The material units are available in two orders, physical order and bio order. And we can see the way they are organized in the physical order, the way they are organized in the bio order. One unit of bio order is the animal body. And when it coexists with the consciousness, it makes the animal order. In the human body, another unit of bio order coexists with the consciousness, it makes the human order. In the human order, there is potential for right understanding and right feeling. And once I am able to ensure this, then I have definite conduct. My behavior, work, and participation is always in terms of universal human order and human tradition. And this is my development. So again, you can see why, like when we are not into this exploration, we might not have a clear idea of what existence is. If you ask any human being today and just ask the person, can you tell me what a human being is? And you can listen to the variety of responses that you get. Now, it might appear somewhat amusing to you that a human being is not able to define what a human being is. If you ask a person what, a na what nature is, if you ask a person what existence is, then you can see variety of responses, you know, maybe so, you know, I am not sure, but could be like this or borrowed notions or things like that could be there. So one significant transformation that has taken place in us that we have got the conceptual clarity now. Now we can talk about human being with definiteness. We can talk about the difference between physical order and bio order with definiteness, the difference in bio order and animal order with definiteness. So that kind of clarity is there in our imagination. Are you able to see this? If somebody asks you that, what is a human being? Can you give a definite answer? What do you feel? You can respond in the chat box. Now see, being a human being, we might be finding it very difficult to say what a human being is. We are just conducting one workshop, one three-day workshop in our institution. And the resource person asked the participants, <coughs> what is a human being? And people said that, oh, it's a very deep question. No, not many people have been able to understand human being and you are asking us. And you want some ready-made answer from us. How can we respond? Things like that were coming up. And this could be a common scenario, isn't it? So we can appreciate the kind of clarity that we have now about human being, about nature, about existence, about development, isn't it? We can see that the units which are mentioned here on the left hand side in the physical order and bio order, there is no development here. They are all in the cyclic process. The development exists here in the self of the human being. And you can also see that in the nature, rest, everything is in order, is in harmony. Only this part has to get in order. And this is going to happen by the self, in the self. Now, so having this clarity, what is my role in existence? So with this clarity, we can see that the existence is by way of coexistence, harmony and relationship. Existence is there as coexistence. I do not have to create it. I do not have to design it, isn't it? It is there, very much there. I only have to align with this. There is already harmony in this nature. I only have to align with this. There is already relationship in the nature. I am embedded in this relationship. I only have to recognize and fulfill it by rightly understanding it. So a very good thing is that 
earlier when we got embroiled with some problems, we felt as if uh, I have to do, I have to sort all problems by myself. You know, the whole world is against me. All the problems always come to me. You know, why I am always being singled out. And so many depressive thoughts might have been coming up. But with the clarity that we have now, we are always feeling resolved. We can very much see that the very design of nature is by way of harmony, by way of relationship. The whole existence is coexistence. And if I am in problems, it is lack of competence in me. I only have to develop my competence. And I have all the potential for it. Even I don't have to look outside for it. The solution is within me. I only have to spare some time for it, prioritize it, and I come up with the solution. Such a big shift in your imagination, in your feeling you can see, isn't it? We just try to contemplate what kind of state you know, we are in today and what kind of state we were there when we were not into this process of exploration. So you'll see that a lot of shift has taken place. Having that clarity in the imagination also is a big achievement. Uh, in place of looking for solution here and there, reading multiple books, listening to discourses, talking to people, and you know, fetching solution from here and there. We are now able to see that the solution is within me. The source of happiness is within me. I only have to work for it. I only have to pay attention to it. And there's a lot more to explore within me, isn't it? Earlier when we got time, we tried to involve ourselves in visiting places, in uh, getting information from the world around, right? Getting various kinds of sensation from the physical facilities around. Now, when we have time, we can see that there's a lot to explore within and we try to spend time with ourselves. So my role in existence is to understand it and to live accordingly. I already have this natural acceptance in me for coexistence, harmony, and relationship. I only have to understand it, understand it and live accordingly. Such a simple thing to do, if you see. Earlier, it was just like breaking mountains. Even thinking about continuity of happiness in life was a kind of far-fetched thing. We tended to assume that we are only few gifted people in the tradition who could attain this kind of state and who can talk about this, who can live accordingly. But now we are able to see that this is very much possible and that is possible by way of formal education also. Every child can go through this process. Every child, while becoming an adult, can have this kind of competence. At least the holistic perspective can be there. So we all need to appreciate this, the kind of transformation or the kind of clarity that we have now. Now, if you look at this, in the whole existence, the human being is there, which has the potential to develop. And in the human being, the self has to develop. And development essential mean, essentially means to awaken the higher level activities of contemplation, understanding, and realization. So I already have the potential these activities are there in me. I have the potential to activate them, to awaken them. Only that I was investing my time and energy outside. The more I look inside, I'm able to awaken to these activities. And that is self-development. So self-development essentially means developing the higher level activities of the self, this block B1. Okay, when the block B1 is activated, it guides block B2. All the problems are there in block B2, isn't it? The problem is not even outside. Problem for a human being. Events are taking place outside. Various kinds of changes are taking place outside. But when I look at things as a problem, it is here in my imagination. And the problem can be resolved very easily or very simply, I'll say, not easily though. Very simply by looking within. So only that I have to focus within. I have to be serious about my development. Isn't it? And the more I am able to work for this transformation within me, which is the self-development, I am also able to develop as a team. For example, presently also we were working as a team. We are working as a team. Now if you see the previous state, it may be that we were working as, as a team, but our focus could be on becoming the team leader, having some prominent position in a team, getting recognition and appreciation from outside, right? 
so many things might be there in our imagination. But the more I work for self-development, I can see the shift in my feeling. It is no more for prominence, for getting attention, appreciation from outside, but it is for ensuring the right feeling within oneself. And the more I work for ensuring the right feeling within me, I get more comfortable with my team. So naturally, if every human being in the team is working for self-development, the team development becomes a very natural kind of process. And when we are able to work as a team and we have a clear vision of society, then we are able to invest ourselves for societal development. It is also a natural outcome. So as I work for self-development, a natural outcome is team development. And again, further natural outcome is societal development. It does follow, right? And when I work for team development and societal development, I get more motivated, more clarity about the need for self-development. For example, if I work as a team and I'm not able to ensure mutual happiness with my team members, okay, I feel hurt or I hurt somebody, then I become you know, uh, observant about it. I try to see within where have I gone wrong? What is wrong inside me, which is hurting me or hurting the other? Then I try to look into the natural acceptable feeling. I'm doing something with the rest of nature and is not fulfilling. I try to look within where am I going wrong? I try to look within where am I going wrong? Now, this kind of transformation is linear. That is there in me. Linear means uh, I'm not going to come back to the previous state. So this is what we are working for. Cell development, team development, societal development. Is that part clear? If any question is there, please let me know. Yes, sir. Nice. So at one end, I keep working for realization within. <clears throat> and at the other end, I work for my participation in the universal human order and human tradition. And we can see the natural expanse of it. So if you see 15 years back, we we're trying to work at the level of one university. Then so many universities you know, got involved. And now we are also able to have a vision for taking it outside the country. Right when we are having the international conference and we are trying to take the content globally, so we are able to see our role in the universal human order. And the more I participate in the universal order, I feel the need more and more for having clarity within to have the clarity about coexistence, to have the clarity about harmony, to have the clarity about relationship. Okay, many times a common kind of mistake is that. The clarity that I have at the level of thought, I assume it to be right understanding. But if I participate and I get feedback in my relation, then I am able to make out for myself whether it was only a thought or I could really contemplate on the right feeling. I could really understand the harmony. So it does take time. It may not be a very kind of straightforward process. There could be zigzags in our emotions, in our uh, imagination. Okay, sometimes I feel fulfilled, sometimes I do not feel fulfilled. So there could be a you know, situation like this. And we already have some relations in which we are embedded in our family, in our organizations, and we might not be able to fulfill our relations every time. So this could be the current state. But ultimately, when I keep working for realization within and keep working for participation outside for human tradition, I am able to ensure my feeling of relationship for one and all. I'm able to ensure my participation in harmony with every unit of nature. And that is a gradual process. That is a natural process. It does take time. And in fact, we'll see that. So uh, that is a very kind of natural process. And the more we are able to invest ourselves for this, the more naturally we are able to work for societal transformation. Now, at the level of individual, we can see that essentially I have to ensure human consciousness in me and that 
for that I have the full potential. So to ensure happiness and prosperity in continuity, I need to work for right understanding and right feeling. And I can then fulfill the graduate attributes. So these are six common graduate attributes which has been designed for education. So I might take some time or a lot of time maybe to reach the state of realization, but we can see that if it is included in education by the age students cross their teenage, they can have a holistic vision of life. They can contemplate on the naturally acceptable feelings so that their behavior is socially responsible. They are able to make out the environmentally responsible work. Now you can see the contrary of it, what is happening today. In place of having holistic vision of life, students have the vision of becoming the billionaire, becoming the richest person in the world, you know, becoming the most famous person of the world. They could have vision like this, but this kind of transformation is possible by giving inputs in education. In place of having the feeling of competition with one and all, they could feel related, they could have affection for everyone. Isn't it gradually taking them to the state of feeling of love? In place of exploiting the nature for profit, they can be responsible towards the nature. And they can have ethical human conduct. They can be more responsible towards health and hygiene. And they can recognize what excellence is and have respect for excellence. And they can have gratitude for all who have worked for their development. So this kind of possibility is there. At the level of society, we can see that the common human goal can be fulfilled. Isn't it? Right understanding, right feeling, prosperity, fearlessness, that is trust and resistance. And again, at the level of nation, we uh, can able we can be able to ensure harmony at the level of nation and also let the nation complement harmony in other nations. Now we can see the present state of the world. War is taking place almost every day. Why almost every day? You know? More than two years have passed since the war between Ukraine and Russia started. And now Israel and Hamas are fighting. And every day, some speculation is there that something worse can happen the next day. So in place of having this kind of scenario in the world, we can have a vision for a humane society across the globe. And we can see our role therein. So the effort required for transformation, you know, if you look at it, social development, family or team development, and societal development. And we can have a solution-centric approach. And for that only, we have been able to make out certain activities and projects. Now with this vision, uh, Ganesh ji had talked about the center of my being, the main source of my happiness. So we can all look at this slide and try to make out what is the center of my being today. Isn't it? The grossest level is physical facility. When I'm trying to fetch happiness in my life through physical facility, and I'm looking at physical facility as the sole achievement in my life, the more I accumulate, the more I consume, the more happy I am. Let the other go to hell. Let the world go to hell. And my concern is only for physical facility. This is the grossest level of living. When I develop a little bit, then I am able to draw my attention to the body. Earlier, it might be the case that I am spoiling my body, spoiling my health for the sake of physical facility more and more. But now, with some kind of observation, I am able to draw my attention to the body that ultimately health is required and it is also important. So in place of indulging myself too much for physical facility, I can give a priority for uh, keeping my body in good shape, good health. But again, my vision is limited to the body. Going further, I may be more uh, subtle in my observation. And I can see that uh, this, or I can uh, be more focused upon sensation. So we can see people in the society who might not be into accumulation and indulgence, might not be so much consuming for the body, right? But they are trying to draw happiness out of sensation, maybe through arts, culture, you know, or through various kinds of sources of sensation, right? Here, self is also involved. So people are trying to draw sources of happiness from sensation, right? This could be another state 
and at the center of our being. And looking at this whole chart, we have to make out what is my center of being. But here again, I am limited to something that I get from the body, right? And it is still a gross level of my living. Going further, I can be more subtle in my observation and I can be focused on getting, getting happiness from feeling from the other. For that, I can even tolerate some unfavorable sensation. Okay. For that, I may even uh, put my body on one side that is uh, giving less priority to the body. I can put the physical facilities aside. But I am investing myself to get some favorable feeling from the other. <clears throat> so you can see there are people in the society who are who might be working so much for the society, okay, but all the time they are focused on how people are looking at them, whether they are getting respect, whether they are getting name and fame, whether they are getting attention from the other or not. So when they get it, they feel excited. When they do not get it, they feel depressed. So this could be another possibility. So still I have improved a little bit because my center of being is no more or little less you know, as it was earlier, focused on physical facility, body or sensation. But ultimately I am trying to fetch something from outside. So that foundation is there. Now, if I'm able to evaluate that, even if I get some favorable feeling from the other, the source of happiness is outside and I'm enslaved. Then I get motivated to ensure the right feeling within. So I'm now focused more on the feeling from within. So we can see that might be shifting here at the level of S2, right? Many of us or most of us might have shifted from here. No more the body or the physical facilities at the center of my being. We might be motivated by sensation sometimes or feeling from the other. But when we are going through the morning sessions, when we are sharing our development, when we are conducting workshops, when we are sharing in a meeting, then we are more or less trying to ensure the right feeling within. But it is not still stated within because I might not have been able to awaken the higher level activity, but the motivation is there. So you can try to make out whether we are uh, at this state 3A or 3B or 4. That is something that we have to make out. For how much time in a day I am at 3A or 3B or 4 or even I can be somewhere here on the top. But still I have to make out for myself. Now more subtle than this is that when I am able to pay attention to my imagination, my feeling, my thought, my expectation and I try to ensure happiness in my imagination. <clears throat> so here only the motivation was there to get right feeling from within. It is not stated within. Not to have it stated within, I am trying to study my imagination, explore my imagination. Now, when I start observing my imagination, I can see that the feeling is at the core. It drives my thoughts and expectations. So I try to look at my feeling and I can see that the feelings are getting driven from sanskar, the assumptions that I am carrying within the preconditionings. Okay, here at 3A, only the motivation was there. At 2C, I am able to observe the feeling. At 2B, I am able to see the root of the feeling, that it's coming from my preconditioning, some assumptions, some sanskar is there in me, which is driving these feelings. Okay, for example, if I assume myself to be the body, I always have feeling of fear. Now, if I try to sort out the feeling of fear, I have to work at this sanskar. Am I the body or different from the body? I might get upset in my relationships, right? Because the other person is not acting according to my expectation. I am able to be aware of this feeling that I'm getting upset about the other. Now at the level of sanskar, I can see that I am assuming within that if the other person works according to me, then only it will ensure happiness for me. And I'm not able to see the relationship here. I am able, I am trying to see the other person as my instrument. This is a deep rooted sanskar in me. So when I try to work at the level of feeling and transform the feeling, I can make out my sanskar. Now here again, so I am now moving from 2C to 2B. But here again, when I'm observing my sanskar, I can see that they are there, but I'm not able to transform them. Okay. So what to do about it? So I start looking at my natural acceptance. 
right? And I was getting hint about my natural acceptance at previous levels also. But here at 2A, I'm trying to look at the natural acceptance more clearly as a pure observer. And the more I work at 2A, right, I'm in a position to awaken my higher level activities of contemplation, understanding, and realization. Now, here again, working at this level, I can see that it is not going to get completed unless I observe the coexistence, my submergence in space, the submergence of nature in space. So I get motivated to move to one. So this is the process of development, right? And we can all make out our center of being. It may not be the case that I'm completely centered at some point and not moving from here to something else. It could be the case. So again, when you go to evaluate, you can make out overall what is the center of your being in your life today at this age. And then in a single day, you can make out what has been my center of being in the morning, in the afternoon. So when I go to the office, what comes to the center? When I'm there in my family, what comes to the center? When I'm there in the morning, attending the morning session, what is my center? That also I can make out. Okay, so these two ways I can evaluate for myself. And I can see within me that the more I am able to work you know, for these shifts, I am able to ensure personal development. And I am able to see more clearly that happiness essentially is my innate nature. It is within. Okay, If I try to fetch from outside, it is going to be temporary, indefinite, with no completion point, always making me dependent on something outside. And I remain enslaved. But the more I work for ensuring the happiness inside me through right understanding, right feeling, I feel more resolved, more liberated, more self-organized. Yes. Now I can take questions regarding this part of the discussion. So if you have any questions regarding the center of being, please raise your hand or you can write your question in the chat box also. We can take up. So take a deeper look at this. Try to make out what it essentially means and where I am today, right? What is my source of motivation today? I just wanted to share, I mean, the uh, you just now mentioned rightly that uh, there are some people uh, with whom we, we may not be able to uh, have the right conduct or the way we uh, expect from ourselves after uh, having the right understanding. Uh, like while we were in Kanpur, we had all the favorable situations, all the people with similar thought process were there. And uh, I also shared in my sharing that I am feeling as if I am at the pure observer state and all. But immediately after returning home, there were some situations and episodes like where, uh, uh, for example, with the spouse or with the child, even the they started expecting a very high performance uh, because I had returned from UHV3 workshop. Okay. Uh, and, <laughs> and here I could realize, and there were back-to-back uh, -to -back two episodes uh, at home where uh, my performance was below or uh, poorest, uh, I could say. And even I had raised expectations from myself and I felt as if I am now uh, almost a realized person or enlightened person kind of thing. And um, suddenly, but then... For a day or two earlier, if such episode would happen, it was it would take very long time to recover from that and to bring back the situation to the normal. But good thing is that for that particular time, I really felt very much low that in spite of uh, having such a great knowledge, uh, I could not uh, really handle the situation well. But then uh, after uh, looking within, at least the uh, mindset could be recovered a little earlier than what it would happen in the earlier days when I wasn't aware of how to uh, handle the situation uh, UHV way, I can say. So uh, it is really a great, uh, we need to be grateful to this knowledge that at least um, we are able to now uh, realize that yes, even I am going wrong and uh, coming out of that uh, victim mentality that even I would, I had the opportunity to uh, contribute in that situation in the positive way, but I could not. And that I have realized that I could not do that. So that is a great thing is what I feel. That's nice. what I wanted to say. 
Nice. And also one thing, one more thing, yeah, I wanted to share. Can you see the center of your being now more clearly after attending the UHV three workshop? Of course, of course. Yes. <laughs> and nice, nice. moment by moment, can see that sometimes if the person in front is not behaving as per your expectation, at least uh, I start become because sometimes people uh, speak a lot and they keep speaking and they do not give you opportunity and you also want to contribute in that situation at least now i realize that if this kind of situation is happening i can prefer to keep silent and give the person opportunity to speak uh, that is one good change i have observed <laughs> nice. Very nice. that is really helping and um, and i am for at that moment i am able to look key okay even i can be i if the person is not ready to keep silent i can at least keep silent for that moment this i could observe and um, in uh, our institute we have started with the uhv2 uh, course so there also for almost um, nine uh, sessions uh, i mean one uh, hour one session and another session is of two hours we have uh, instead of practical we conduct the session over there uh, so such almost ninth session uh, up to ninth session it was almost a one way dialogue one way uh, conversation uh, students used to raise hand and they said yes no all that but then um, i felt great when on the ninth lecture a student uh, spoke up the ice broke and uh, he said that ma'am i don't agree that we can remain happy in continuity so that was a great uh, opening of my lecture, I felt. And then uh, other students also started sharing. And uh, now the um, lecture has come to a level that where the students are ready to participate. Uh, so that is really, I felt great when the one student spoke and he uh, at least got attached to the content and they are now ready to participate in that. So I think this was what I wanted to share. And um, I feel that there is a lot of need to work hard uh, to really uh, be able to, um, I mean, improve on personal level so that there will be the real contribution at the societal level. And at least at the uh, front of my home also, if I am able to handle the things better, I'm sure uh, in case of society, it will be very easy for me to do that. Because at home, uh, things are more challenging than uh, that of the society and I face challenges more challenges at home um, and it's not only uh, not about other people but I myself take it for granted when I am at home and uh, so I face the problems is what I have started understanding now so I think this is real um, a change or um, a benefit of uh, attending UHV workshop at Kanpur. That's what I wanted to share, Bhaiya. Thank you. Nice, Siddhi. Uh, Bhaiya, if I go by this slide, that the center of my being, I feel that somewhere around 2B and 2C. But nevertheless, many a times I see that, uh, you know, it uh, sometimes falls to uh, 3B also. That is feeling from the other. As uh, Didi was saying that, you know, the, uh, like the expected uh, feeling from uh, others that they should behave this way. But uh, uh, after this uh, UHV sessions and uh, going through, because after that I have been listening to all your, uh, you know, recordings of this UHV three sessions. And so now I feel much resolved because very recently there was a confusion in the, uh, in my own uh, department, you know, where uh, uh, there was a, uh, between a supervisor and a scholar, there was a lot of confusion. So had it been earlier, I would have really lost my mind and I would have really, uh, reacted to it but then uh, I called both of them and very coolly uh, the matter I resolved and uh, it was all settled within uh, 10 minutes so uh, when I uh, see this so I really feel uh, happy about it that uh, this is how uh, you know I have become more resolved rather than getting agitated uh, by seeing anything outside but again Bhaiya, I would say uh, still sometimes it happens so as I was telling you in the meeting also the other day that is, you know, when I listen to the news about uh, uh, different kinds of things, the unruly things that what is, that's what is happening in the society, it is sometimes disturbing. And because when I see that I, I am resolved 
and this should not affect me. So uh, sometimes this thought is coming to my mind that am I being very selfish uh, regarding this? That is, I want to be resolved within myself. But at the same time, I see that uh, around me, there are so many uh, things happening, which is really disturbing. Like somebody uh, giving names, bullying each other, or uh, somebody just trying to pull each other down for no reason. And uh, then, uh, so uh, this is what is my feeling. So sometimes I feel I'm in to be because uh, uh, something that which is naturally acceptable to me, I really understand that and I work towards it. And uh, I'm uh, trying, uh, rather I should not say trying, but I am resolved and I am in harmony. But at times, these are the things which is disturbing. So, bhaiya, what should I do? Like, uh, is it natural or is it unnatural? I'm not able to, uh, you know, sometimes find this way that why it comes that everything that are, is around me sometimes is disturbing. So in like case of injustice. natural, I call it normal. It does happen with the uh, level of understanding that we have presently. And as we progress further, we are able to see the holistic solution. So many times looking at the problems in the society, we feel that we should participate some way or the other to right. resolve the issues. But if you try to even imagine the steps that you are going to take and the outcome that is going to be there, you can see that unless the other person also has right understanding, he or she himself or herself can be the source of another kind of problem. Correct. So unless the personal development is ensured, okay, societal development will not be sustainable. So there could be moments when I have to intervene, okay, so for some uh, relief operation outside, I can do that temporarily. But I can see very much within me that the sustainability would be there only when the person has transformed. And otherwise, the sustainability would not be there. And the person who is suffering today, even if I try to emancipate this person by some means or the other, through physical facility or something else, okay, it is not going to sustain unless this person himself or herself has the right understanding. Because then, to fulfill the need for happiness in continuity, the other person may create some more problems for the rest of the society. This is something that we have been observing in the history also. People who were okay. suffering at one time, okay, now when they got some kind of favorable situation from outside, they could not uh, sustain it. And then they started creating problems in other ways. Like if you just see <clears throat> the war today between Israel and Hamas. So at one time when Hitler was uh, being so cruel to the Jews, so they were given some space you know, where they could reside. But after some time, you can see, like in place of becoming a source of solution for the entire world, that is not happening. So yeah. we can have that long-term vision also for the society. So we can see that unless the personal transformation is ensured, the societal transformation is not going to sustain whatever methods we adopt. And it is not transformation also. It is some kind of relief operation that we can go for. Right, right. Absolutely, Veya. Because it's a very difficult task, even uh, for a, you know, a very small incident. Supposing, like, you know, in my uh, colony, there were, there were two little boy, a boy and a girl who were poor. So I saw them, they used to climb up my pomegranate tree. And the pomegranates were not very sweet. So they used to pluck, take and throw it. So then uh, I thought that uh, they must be hungry. So whatever biscuits, whatever I had, whenever uh, I could see them, I gave them. And so some, I used to call them inside, give them the biscuits, give them some water and ask them to go. And uh, now that they grew up, uh, so <laughs> once I left, uh, there's a watchman in my house. And uh, so I left the fan, actually, we have given him a fan. So that fan was left outside. It was a table fan. So I saw that boy going. And uh, every day I get it inside and that day I forgot to get it. And the very next moment, it's not there. And from the CCTV, I could see he has stolen. But again, what could I do? I said, okay, <laughs> like he needed it. And when I saw him, I asked him, I said, this is the right thing. Did you do? And he didn't answer. He said, Mane to bech diya. So <laughs> again, of course, at one point of time, I did feel that uh, we shouldn't be helping these people. But then uh, this is uh, something that is in my nature. I feel pity for people who are, uh, you know, this way hungry and going hungry. I say that I can, uh, you know, I'm eating so much and uh, I should be feeding others. So this is how it is, Veya. Yes, you are very right. <laughs> it comes. 
there is some limitation of time otherwise we would have some more dialogue about this but fine yes, nice so thank you everyone i conclude here priya didi uh, thank you kumar bhaiya today uh, we could get the clarity very well even i could get clarity of the last speech that was shown today only since i have not attended the uhv3 workshop uh, so I, it was i think a really enriching session for all the volunteers and co explorers so now i uh, request i know many hands are raised and many questions are there in the chat box we'll take it next time uh, now i re request umesh bhaiya for the sharing uh, lessons from a volunteering journey really namaste namaste to everyone Thank you, uh, Raju Bia, Tara Bia, Sunil Bia, and Kumar Bia, for taking us to the activities, nationwide activities, the personal sharings, the journey of exploration, and uh, Kumar Bia's you know address. I have this responsibility to uh, talk about something about my. self development and how do a self development can contribute to the team development and how an individuals and the team together can participate for the societal development so i'm taking it into two parts basically number one part is sharing my journey a little bit connecting with the team development i discovered that my basic aspiration is to be the continuous partner in the workshop which had happened in gate college of business study july 2012 banu bhaiya and rajul bhaiya were my mentor and then september 2012 i got this opportunity to explore my basic aspiration and basically that was the time right i clearly understood that i want to be happy i want to have the continuity of happiness within and one confidence came into me that i can be happy but with that confidence i also got a tool to verify my imagination so i mean just recently on the 2nd of august uh, i concluded eight days of tp in psna dandigal and i remember on the on the same day so while concluding the tp sharing the sum up and the way forward one of the participants have asked me this question what was your state before joining universal human values and my simple reply was you know all those pre conditioning all those sensations which normally you are able to see in you all those pre conditioning and sensations were there in me also and then the second question was that are you able to see yourself in the continuous happiness and my response was no i those pre conditioning and sensations are still there but at least one thing is happening that i am able to aware of it i am able to work on some of the pre conditioning and some of the sensations and the third question was related to the program of excellence and one of the participants asked me in the same workshop that are you able to see yourself that you have reached to the level of your mentor and i said no my mentor's level is very high and as compared to my mentor i think i have to travel a lot you know, travel a lot but at least i am able to see and having this feeling of gratitude towards all of my mentors continuously they are trying to pull me to their level but often i was not able to my own 
readiness stops to take that help. So each one of us has got our own journey. Each one of us has got our own speed of journey. Each one of us exploring continuously that do we want to be happy, unhappy? A very natural answer comes that yes, I want to be happy. But then as presented by Kumar Bhaiya, what is the center of our living? Then, you know, simply we are able to locate our center. That we want to be happy, we want to reach to that state of an excellence. But often the center is in B2 block, or maybe sometimes in a B1 block. At least I'm able to see to it for me very clearly. So happiness is to be to be within the state of harmony within. And I think till the point, you know, that desperation comes from within. Yes, I want to be happy. And that is the only thing I want. I guess the process of self-development may not be able to initiate within us. By that time, what happens? There is a possibility that we keep answering to the question, Yes, I want to be happy. I want to be with a feeling of relationship. And sometimes sort of a confusion that I'm answering to the question that I'm, I want to be with a feeling of relationship, which means I'm living with a feeling of relationship. But there's a gap. So there's a big gap between my desirable state and my current state. But the efforts are required. Efforts for the self-development. I remember my September workshop, September 2012. Ganesh sir was the mentor. And from the session one, I mean, thanks to Rajiv Bhaiya and Banu Bhaiya because they have oriented me for the three days. So from the session one, I got connected with the content very nicely. So at least I was able to have listening most of the time. And then what I learned from that workshop, I know it was my very early learning, but what I understood is living is important. And I can start doing some sort of changes in my living, you know, to experientially validate the proposals. <laughs> so I remember, you know, one of the sudden changes I did from a man who used to bring styles in the campus, styles of wearing clothes, styles of wearing shoes, styles of wearing ties and the overcoats and whatnot. I shifted myself and taken this kurta pajama. It was just to check my feelings, whether the cloth is to protect the body or there is some respect, status, happiness is associated with the clothes. I still remember those, you know, experiment with the cloth. Sometimes wearing Kota Pajama, going to the conference or going to a wedding, that depression with them, sort of a deprivation that look at all the people are wearing so beautiful clothes, fabulous, exclude you. But you are in this course of item. Sometimes that ego, look at that others, you know, they are wearing all those different, different kinds of clothes. But see, you are so simple, that ego. So then I understood that when I am trying to experiment in my living, that's basically giving me a lot of opportunity to observe my feelings, observe my thoughts. I mean, it's just a small change. I change in the clothes, but a lot of observations. So, the one more, <clears throat> the French for, the thirst for, you know, understanding. 
have taken. I remember one of the proposals which I have explored in from that first workshop. A lot of lot many proposals, but one of the proposals was the respect over evaluation, under evaluation, otherwise evaluation, right evaluation. And then you know, I was totally lost my confidence talking to the people. Because I could clearly observe that whenever I'm saying something to the other, either it will be the over evaluation of them, under evaluation of them, or otherwise evaluation. And that was turning out to be a disrespect. Of course, I didn't have a clarity on what respect is, even then. I was just thinking if the words are there, over evaluating words, under evaluating words, you know, that is disrespect and if you are saying in a balanced way, that is a respect. But anyway, that small thing, you know, that small thing also put me into sort of an isolation. And that eight months of isolation, when I lost my confidence talking to the people, and the only thing I did in my campus, I was allowed to go to the campus only if there is lecture. If there are no lectures, I could be at my home, maximum 16 lectures were there in a week. So just going to the class, I was comfortable talking to the children sitting in the classroom. I was very comfortable talking to Renu, Aditya, Shivak, I, and just a couple of friends in the campus. Otherwise, you know, the only program I followed during that eight months is listening to uh, the recordings of workshop and reading the book. I really don't know how many times I read and listen, but at least five, six times I listen to whole recording and two, three times I read the thorough readings of that book. And that has started helping me to understand the concepts. And then I realized that in the workshop, though I thought that I'm listening to the content, but uh, that understanding did happen because so much of preconditioning and then the content coming from resource person based on the harmony. So most of the time there was like clash, most of the time there was like comparison between my previous set of information and this new information. But that new information I just started internalizing by reading and uh, listening. So I think this is important for the self-development is understand. Understanding and living. So we may start doing some sort of experiment in our living. One of the experiment may be, I will not get an agree. So your whole focus is on your behavior there could always be a possibility of having an inner reactions inside. But at least, you know, you can, you can control that reactions outside. Other experiment in living can be, okay, I will eat only the food which is required for my body. So I may go and take the food for three times, but maybe one dosa. Then I go and I take another dosa, but not three dosa that one time. So such sort of small, small experiments also helps us because through this experiment, we understand something. But basically what is important is the understanding. Understanding the reality of human being, understanding the reality that each one of us in our family would like to live okay with each one of us. The society, you know, the fearlessness, harmonious, Nature is in mutual fulfillment. So I also want to live with the mutual fulfillment of the nature. At least in the recent past, thanks to COVID, after the COVID, I mean, during that COVID period, lockdown period until today, uh, we are able to see that uh, volunteers like us are developing through regional weekly meetings. So to understand the harmony, and to live in harmony at all the levels, 
this is one of the program we can have attending regional weekly meetings morning session is continuously there the next morning batch is going to start from 1st of september so we can attend that morning batch reading textbook listening to the recorded sessions and then experiential validations in our living so this is important but at least when i look my own journey i am able to see at least in my case whenever there is a de desperation to be understand i take the efforts so the desperation has to come from within to explore continuously what i really want to be what is my natural acceptance what is my intention this continuous exploration helps us to remain reminded with i want to be happy because you know many times we just forgets our whole attention get diverted outside so that innateness of being happy may not be there we may not be able to pay our attention on it so that's the reason it's important to explore continuously what i really want to be what is my natural acceptance what is my intention with this continuous exploration the self awareness and each one of us are experiencing morning sessions both the exercise seeing the self by the self and seeing the body by the self this exercises are helping us to develop our self awareness so we get aware of our desire thoughts expectations expectation is to be aware of ourselves at every moment sometimes we are sometimes we are not able to but then at least attending to the morning sessions writing journals making few things to have that awareness it helps us i was talking to shrija madhuriti in geetam university andhra pradesh and then i just simply asked i said didi you go to the college in the morning and you also prepare the food then how do you manage to attend this morning session so didi simply replied before attending morning sessions also i was cooking the food now also i cook the food but you know before morning session all those thoughts were going in my me going in me most of the time those disturbing thoughts ill thoughts opposition anger jealousy but now i put my cell phone on the speaker mode i cook the food i listen to the morning session and that helps me to organize my thoughts and to explore that so the moment we understand that it is important to spare time for the understand to be happy with them then we can you know always find out such ideas i remember uh, talking to raghavendra bia he is from indor madhya pradesh and he said that on his uh, wash basin he wrote this is the time to look for that next to his office computer he wrote a cheat this is this is the time to look for that on his dining table this is the time to look for that next to his television also this is the time to look for that so such sort of activities you know such sort of things could also help us to get aware that okay i need to be aware of myself this is the time to look for that people around me are interacting as per their feelings towards me but then take a pause look with and see that you have this feeling of relationship you have this feeling of opposition so the continuous self evaluation on the basis of natural acceptance this helps us 
in the sub development. Let me see if there is any question here. Okay, good. So I'll go ahead. This efforts for the self development, team development, and societal development. So this formula we are going through. So participation in the team development and, and societal development is natural expansion and reflection of self development. So when I say team, which means it's a family of the people living together with mutual fulfillment to achieve a common goal. But then my participation in that family of the people who are working for the common goal of mutual fulfillment is possible only I am able to see my feeling of relationship with every member of, of the team. So the more I develop within, I get expanded outside. I can get easily connected with all the team members. And you know, it's so fortunate that in UHV, we do not have one team, but there are several teams of volunteer, national team, regional team, online workshop team, face-to-face -face workshop team, international conference team, and all the, you know, the activities and the projects have got different teams. So participation in the team development is basically help me to test my feeling of relationship towards the team I'm working for, the team I'm working with, and towards the other team. I may or I may not be have a direct involvement. So this is this basically helps us, helps us to understand our feelings of relationship. You know, many times we do this exercise and we can really keep doing this exercise. If we are in the meeting, online meeting, if we are working on some project and a meeting is going on, look at all the people who are there in the meeting. Look at the name of the people who are there in the online and then check your feelings. Whether you have same certain feelings for every member, every volunteer who is attending this meeting, or for some member, you know, you feel comfortable with them, for some member, you are not comfortable with them. And then it helps us. It helps me personally to work on my feeling and to work on, on my understanding. So I guess this is the a good benefit I have been receiving by participating in the team development. Participation is our value. If we would not participate, then what else will we do? We are a unit. A unit is the whole existence as a human being in the nature. We are a part of society. We are a part of family. We are an individual. And we want to participate. So participating in the team development and the societal development is valuable for each one of us. And by participating only, I can fulfill my responsibility towards myself, towards family, towards team, towards society, towards environmental, environment, towards nature, which means I'll be able to fulfill my individual value, my family value, my team value, my societal value, my environmental values. And that is what we want to, right? Volunteering means what? It's basically an opportunity for the development of competence and skills. So there are several activities and the projects related to universal human value. Let me just spell out a few briefly. We have online workshops. Starts from Monday to Friday. In the online workshops, when the participants registered, 
then a team of volunteers convert that registration into a manual registration to give them that unique ID. So that manual registration needs to be done. Many volunteers have shared this, that I was not able to do it, but because I'm the part of this particular team, I have developed that skills. And initially, it used to take one hour to do 10 registration, but now I'm able to do 40 registration in one hour. So skills is getting developed. Another volunteering in online workshop is the faculty helped us. You know, all of you who have attended the online workshop in your invite mail, you must have noticed minimum four names of faculty volunteers. Have you ever asked this question to yourself who these faculty volunteers are? They are basically like us only, working in the college, having this social responsibility, family responsibility, and participating for the societal development, taking efforts for the personal transformation through volunteering. So the volunteers who have worked in this help desk, you know, very common sharing that they have, that we have learned to take the calls and we have learned to listen to the people. Because when the participants are asking the questions, mostly, you know, they are irritated. They have missed their poll. They have missed their quiz. They have missed doing the assignments. And they have that fear of losing the certificate. So because of that, that irritation is there. That anger is there. And with all that irritation, all that anger, they are calling you. And now you have to solve their query. So volunteers shared many a times that we have developed the capacity of listening and what we understood if i listen to the people half of their problem gets resolved and then with that feeling of relationship at least you know it's a responsibility to take up the query of the volunteer participant so with that responsibility, when the volunteer starts talking to the participants, then they said that, you know, if I can talk to a stranger whom I never met with feeling of relationship and responsibility, that is giving me a confidence that I can talk to my family members also. And I can talk to people of my department and the college and the society. So each of the efforts we do for the self-development through the volunteering. Volunteering is basically for my development. There is one more fraction called the faculty uh, frequently asked questions. So when the participants put their questions in the online workshops, in the face-to-face -face workshop, a volunteer or the team of volunteers note down that question. It helps to reformulate the question. Because sometimes, you know, the participants may ask you a very lengthy question. But the question is basically just one line. So how to reformulate? When we reformulate, our sharpness increases. And then while writing the questions, we also start giving the answers to that questions. And then, you know, doing the mapping of our answers with resource person's answer. And seeing that, you know, whether my answer and the resource person's answer is same or it's different. So such sort of volunteering always helps. So those who would like to initiate the process of development through volunteering can uh, simply write the name uh, in this chat box, or you can simply you know, sh show your interest uh, on whatever the WhatsApp group you are, or with um, your regional coordinators. Uh, yes, uh, uh, you may remember why in your stay, while you were staying in uh, Kit, 
night so oh, we are talking about something about self development and many more things so you can recollect and again we met there at kanpur yes so sir. yeah uh, i am interested for volunteership i understand that that completes the journey otherwise it's not but i am really speaking i am really confused that every day there are some kind of meeting or the other i do not know where to join i am totally really confused here so in that case i am of, of course i find that uh, when the age is developed and in that case um, i find i have not found any problem regarding that but i to be cautious because uh, once i moved outside the house home and i suffered there in kanpur uh, for for the a little fever or something so i want to know two things one is that can you show me the the shortest way for self development and suppose i want to devote only one hour uh, except uh, listening to the morning session uh, two hours so in that case what should i do so that i want to be clarified from you if it time permits you can uh, answer or otherwise i can talk to my regional coordinator yeah bhai at thank least you, thank you, thank you. at least i will share you how do i manage and how do i set my priority um see lot of activities are there uh, so many projects are happening i simply see i check my competence i check my skill i check my availability of time i see where i'm spending the time because often i'm able to observe that some of my time is getting spending on something out of which i am not receiving anything in terms of understanding so mm -hmm. i i you know i see to mm -hmm. i i i do that observation and then mm -hmm. and then i am able to find out yes every day i can spare some time now the time where i have where do i need to spare some time that time then i can checking the competence checking the skills so this online workshops right happening every day every week almost so in that online workshops we can spend like one and a half hour it's a one and a half hour session one yeah, and a yeah. half hour every day or one and a half hour in a week mm -hmm. then there are lot of activities like documentations are there those who are good in doing research lots of data is there you know we can do the data analysis we can do the data interpretations mm -hmm. those yeah. those you know Lot, so many patients are happening, and we need to edit these videos and put it in our library. So that is also mm -hmm. one of the one of the things we publish mm -hmm. newslet new monthly newsletter. So we can contribute into monthly newsletter. So two things: uh, number one, uh, observing our time where it is getting spent, and number two. identifying our own skill competence and interest and based on that choosing the area of area for um, participating but yeah. you know you know but but uh, like from my observations experience i would say there is nothing um, big participation there is nothing small participation uh, you know in that in that face to face workshop uh, the volunteers I mean that is how our volunteering has also started. I this morning Moti Bhaiya shared his sharing in the Hindi uh, session that uh, when the participants enter inside the workshop hall, you know, keeping shoes here and there, and then placing that shoes at one place in a systematic order, he is also volunteering. And yes. such kind of such kind of things helps us to. look our feelings basically you know and that that basically helps us to 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 observe our ego right mm -hmm. so so you can choose any of this thing pay or you may 
as you have a lot of time to spend and uh, you are always willing to spend time so discuss with yes. uh, dilip bhaiya you we may have direct uh, you know call i would uh, okay. give you few more ideas and suggestions regarding to the voluntary and the areas okay. of areas of voluntary yes i'll talk to you personally okay bhaiya okay yes. fine so fine so this volunteering help us helps us in the self development and with this self development only we can be instrumental useful and participants in the team development so expansions of team at the level of department so there is possibility that you are one of the person in from your department who has attended the workshops and keen in developing yourself but then it's important to involve the department people when you involve the department people you know particularly a face to face workshop for example uh, volunteering in the face to face workshop at the ip team you have to away from your department college for 3 days 5 days 8 days but if you develop our own team in the department so then our own team can take care of our responsibility in our absentia and then bringing almost everyone from the department to the workshops also helps to develop kind of an environment of relationship in the department so this is one of the area we can proactively work for developing a team the team at my department then such departmental team can be a college team together can work for creating a conducive environment for excellence in the college now this such colleges together can make the whole university as a model of living with harmony so all these department college universities together can help in the development of the regional team so when we say the region some of the region has started you know uh, doing this activity now of course it's a very initial phase but identifying uhv volunteer or identifying the people who attend the workshops from every village every district and the geographical region so this way we can develop a regional team all these regions work together is a national team and we are the nation can work for the universal team so this is the expansion of the team at the level of department college university region for that there is lot of coordination is required but then it's important to see that this is my responsibility to be happy and this is my responsibility to ensure that harmony in the society so i don't have to wait for someone to come and tell me this is the thing you can do right it's my responsibility and i can start building the of this team by connecting with the people so we can talk to each other you know talking to each other listening to each other is also very important not necessary you know we should talk about the uhv activity or volunteering but just connect to the people understand who all are there in their family how the things are going on in their family how you could be a sort of help in resolving an individual or the family you know at least when we listen to the people and if they are into some sort of personal issue problems or interpersonal problems and if, if we could just try to draw their attention on their natural acceptance that they want to live with a feeling of relationship this also helps in resolving their issue so connecting with the people with that affinity is important so we may call we may call uh, the participants who have attended the workshop our own batchmates we may call uh, 
the, the volunteer who are connected on our WhatsApp groups, just to get introduced ourselves, just to know them. It's important to recognize the people. It's important to know the people, and that is how we will get connected. And so much of planning is required. So much of coordination is required for the team, for the team development. So regional coordinators can take this responsibility for each of the region. The college coordinators can take up this responsibility for each of the each of these regions. And important is this cohesion. Is you know what I was talking about. My feeling towards others. Now, that is very important. It takes a time. It takes a time to evaluate ourselves rightly. It takes a time to evaluate others rightly. It takes a lot of time to get clarity on the intentions, my intentions and the other intentions. But yeah, it's a journey. And when we travel through this journey, it's me who benefits more and individual. I keep developing in my understanding. I keep developing in my feelings. I keep develop, developing in my relations. So the more I travel with him, I get expansions outside. So I am, I am tra trying to travel with him. And I'm also traveling outside. You know, from 14th of June till 6th of August, I was outside. 14th of June, I started FDP in Keat. Um, maybe I just mentioned about that FDP. Uh, Bhuneshwar. From there, I went to Pune. From there, I went to Mumbai. And then, Devi Bhai, I have also mentioned about Kanpur. So, Kanpur, we had this UHV3 con workshop. And then from there, I went to Pune again. And Tindigal, yesterday I came back. Traveling outside is the way, you know, interacting with many people. Um, people who have just started attending workshop, people who have been attending workshop, interacting with mentors, interacting with all the different states people, see Odisha, Maharashtra, and then that UHV three workshops, they were representative from almost half of the country. And remaining half of the country have attended UHV three in asylum. And then uh, Tamil Nadu, so interacting with this, all these people, what I understood that each one of us wants to be happy. There's a great environment, uh, conducive environment is happening for um, the societal transformation. But then it becomes our responsibility. It becomes my responsibility to work on my development so that I can participate in the societal development through team development. So this much I wanted to communicate. Uh, thank you, Mish Bhaiya, for the nice sharing your uh, your journey and uh, how we can develop as a team. Yes, uh, it's not a question, actually, uh, to Mish Sir. I would like to uh, refer two important things that I, I got to learn during my SRM UHV3 and my co-explorers would be happy to know that we got Umesad in SRM University uh, as our facilitator, as our mentor. And most importantly, I would just like refer to that one, you know, uh, one morning, fine morning, when uh, we were at the breakfast table, Umesad was sitting just in front of me and asked, what's going on? The throw of the question was so informal that uh, led me to think a time that if he means something metaphorical, because it happens in all our UHD mentors. And uh, yes, I, I explained what was going on in me. Right now, I found that he was actually checking the point of desperation that he was referring, you know, once again today in a very formal setting. But during that time, it was not such formal. It was an informal setting only. That is one thing I would like to share with my uh, fellow participants over here. 
And the second thing that I always found that he has the inner spirit of building team, never been satisfied with himself, always with the list of people. Though we had uh, pure observer Dipesh sir over there during our SRN UHD tree, but uh, his work as he has already referred today that he always tries to see the names, their work and how they are doing work in this uh, in development and for the societal development. We have got to learn so many things from Sir's journey uh, into UHD. And our mentors, uh, yes, Ganesh, starting from Ganesh Sir, our Kumar Shambhav Sir, Rajul Sir, and Somila uh, those, Abhanshana uh, ma'am, those who have always found that they have been, you know, having the inner heart within that uh, to guide us so that we can be the real volunteer for our UHD. So, Priya ma'am and Sharad sir and all RC members, I would like to, you know, just uh, refer right now that they are doing so well, especially in South India, because I, I got opportunity to visit that, see that how the team members are working for the development of other team members that, uh, yes, we are also try to do that in our Eastern region. But as uh, yes, Dilip said, and others are also there over there. Check me. The two things that I would like to refer with Umesh said that he has the primary concern for team development and his journey almost, you know, all other parts of India with our other mentors really commendable once again. Thank you, all UHV team members and my co explorers. Over to you, Kuya ma'am. Uh, thank you, Sarvan, sir, for your nice, um, what you experienced in the uh, UHV3 workshop, sharing with us. So, uh, due to lack of time, I think uh, we need to um, conclude the sharing. So, we have to go to the last part for the uh, closing remarks and the uh, updates. Didi, Didi, I would just like to respond to Sadhan Bhaiya in few yeah. seconds. Yes. Uh, yes, Sadhan Bhaiya. I mean, it's important to get related to the people, to connect with the people. Uh, in the process, sometimes you know, we are not able to evaluate ourselves. We get the jerks, but uh, sometimes we get uh, disturbed within. But all those kind of things really helps us to understand our own feeling of relationship. Um, yeah, I mean, connecting with people, that's kind of um, my make, I would say. <laughs> and uh, I, feel, <laughs> so I, feel, I feel glad that at least uh, I know many of the volunteers. And uh, not only many of the volunteers, but you know, I, I would not say every single volunteer I know, but I, I know many of the volunteers I, and the family connect. See, that is what is important, Sadhan Bhaiya. See, yes, activities sir. are happening, volunteering is happening, projects are happening. Uh, if sometimes the other person may not be able to do the work properly, may not be able to take to, uh, the work in the stipulated time, that accuracy will not be there. But what is important, that person should not be get disconnected from us. Yes. So we are a family. We are a family. So mm -hmm. if we keep if we keep developing ourselves, Within, and if we keep expanding our family as a uh, uh, in the number, you know, when I'm saying our family, I mean to say the family who is working for uh, the societal transformation. So it's not only the UHV family, but all those families put in together who are mm -hmm. working for the societal transformation through personal transformation. We all are the family, and we all are working for the same thing. Yes, sir. That is Thank very you. important, uh, that holistic approach you always refer. And only uh, under your uh, your uh, resource personship, so many new resources have already got developed from South India to specially named Sunil sir, Benoit sir and others, whom I got to meet during our SRM3 session. Thank you, sir. Very commendable work that you have been doing, uh, yes, in the UHC. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you, Bhaiya. Thank you for being the part. And we we all can do that. Yes, thank you so much. Over to you, Bhaiya Didi. 
Thank you, Faya. Now, in the last session, we have the future plans and the vote of thanks by Vasanti Didi. Namaste, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. As uh, everyone is saying, uh, this closing remarks also a, a kind of opportunity for me to explore further. So before, uh, uh, Bhaya, uh, shall I do uh, updates first and then future plans? You can do the future plans, right? Future plans. Okay. okay. Already it, it's been covered, I think. So uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, let me express my gratitude to all the members who contributed and also participated. So just uh, reminding ourselves of the important points. Uh, the session began with uh, uh, welcoming Priyadi and uh, throughout the se session, uh, she moder moderation and all nicely done. And then um, uh, thank you, Didi. And then we had uh, Rajul Bhaiya's updates. Uh, it's a very important thing. Uh, it's like... Uh, how important our participation we could understand uh, the important things we can remember uh, the three day online uh, international uh, conference at SRM IST uh, um, that, that is very important uh, based on uh, three sub teams. And that conference actually uh, was highlighted um, uh, maybe like motivating all the educators uh, global uh, scenario uh, to work on human values, health and other things. And the second one was uh, very uh, interesting and uh, we can understand uh, how surveys, uh, the impact surveys are uh, helping us understand further we are in the uh, right uh, path, uh, especially the study by uh, the quantitative and longitudinal survey by IRMA. We could understand uh, how uh, UHV is helping everyone. And then we could listen to Tara Prasanna Bhaiya and Sunil Bhaiya uh, their sharing actually helped us. Uh, uh, so it was like uh, a booster dose for us. So how uh, Tara Bhaiya started, like, um, what can I do for the society? He started with that and uh, how he is doing very nicely with the morning sessions. And uh, uh, he said that uh, uh, the journey actually helped him understand the feeling of relation within, uh, maybe for self and others. Uh, thank you, Bhaiya. And Sunil Bhaiya also shared uh, like uh, his, Participation itself is like not forceful. He himself uh, uh, helped others participate as a principal and he also uh, uh, joined the sessions. And from there, uh, how he could uh, uh, improve his uh, exploration and uh, uh, being contributing as a resource person also. And Bhaya said that volunteering is uh, for me to understand uh, and then uh, live by that. So that is very nice, Bhaya. So live only... By living only, we can share it. Thank you, Bhaiya, for that nice term. And then it was followed by Kumar Bhaiya's keynote session. Uh, it, truly, it's uh, inspiring. Societal transformation happens only through personal transformation. So very nice. We could understand ourselves that, uh, first of all, let us develop and then only team development or societal development happens. The significant point here is center of my being. So this we are we should be aware of uh, the sources of our happiness. Thank you, Bhaiya, for uh, uh, the nice session. And then um, during the session, uh, let me also thank uh, uh, our uh, co-participants, Aarti Didi and Swayam Prabha Didi. Uh, through your uh, uh, reflections, no, you you actually uh, extended that discussion. Very nice. Thank you, Didi. And then uh, just now uh, the session concluded, Omash Bhaiya's session. So here we could understand maybe uh, a few reflections also, but there uh, by the participants, Devi Prasanna Bhai. And just now Sadhan Bhaiya also. So how uh, our exploration, so it's nice, uh, like uh, uh, Omesh Bhaiya was telling about experimenting. It's like uh, observation, uh, our own thoughts and all while interacting with others. It was very nice. Like uh, uh, while listening only, uh, I myself felt like uh, this is the way we have to. It's not like simply listening to the content and all. Uh, so how we can interact with others, like uh, if, if we do it in deep, like uh, continuous exploration happens and if we should be aware of the thoughts and all. Then uh, the possibilities of uh, being um, a volunteer, because volunteering is an opportunity 
where we can develop feeling for others. That's very nice. So uh, just I, I think though we listen to all these no, like uh, important points I highlighted uh, so that uh, like, uh, we can uh, reinforce the thoughts. So uh, let me once again on behalf of all of our uh, for participants, uh, thank each and every one for your valuable suggestions and uh, your sharings. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deep. Thank over you. to you. Thank you, Vasandi Deepi. So I think uh, we have many workshops, uh, offline workshops also happening uh, in many parts of India so that you can see from the ACT portal. It is also given now. And also uh, the online workshop in English will be starting uh, from tomorrow onwards. And uh, and main important like volunteering activities, you can tell your uh, vol uh, coordinator, uh, regional coordinators. When we have have shown interest, uh, so you can uh, inform your regional coordinators because volunteering is for our own self exploration. And also the morning sessions, which will be starting from uh, September first, we can uh, inform our colleagues who are done the UHP introductory workshop. So thank you all the resource persons and co-explorers. It was really a very nice uh, meeting. We could itself understand more about volunteering and many of the uh, UHV content more clearly. So thank you each one of you. Namaste.